I started along my way because I realized somewhere along the way that if I wanted to get out of, you know, this menial existence, it was up to me. It didn't have to do with anybody else. It had to do with what I needed to do. So the first book I got, because I went looking for books, of course, was Awaken the Giant Within, Tony Robbins. And I wrote on the first, uh, so I did like my first read started on September 1994. And I always write when I reread the books in my books. And this was awesome because at the time I was at Remax International. It was a great corporate job. I was climbing the corporate ladder, making all of $29,000 a year. And I had a waitress job at night, every night to try to make ends meet. And, and you know, um, this book turned me on to the mindset that was really necessary to start taking charge of your own life and how to take charge of your own life. Then I picked up Think and Grow Rich. Now, this I started reading in October 1994. Several reads of this, and then I went to another book. And so the Think and Grow Rich book, larger version, has more of these. But on my third read, my third read was in February 1995. And at that point, that was the time I met Bob Proctor. Uh, I, he was at a convention for Remax, and I was his handler. This is a story I tell in my Conversations with Bob book. And, be, and I was in charge of getting him from the keynote to the workshop. I had to walk him from the keynote to the workshop. And in that time frame, as we are walking toward the workshop, I suddenly blurted out to him that I had been thinking about doing, you know, like starting my own freelance writing business. And then I was like, what the hell? What the, how did, did I say that in my outside voice? I had never admitted that to a person in the world, but I loved writing. I had all these degrees and all this other stuff but I loved writing. I'd been writing all my life. It came easy to me. Whenever I was in that space, everything just flowed. And I loved doing that. It was my desire. I had a desire to be a bigger writer in a bigger way. And when you're a bigger writer in a bigger way, you can change the world in a bigger way. So by the time I got through the end of Bob's workshop, of course, I had decided that I was leaving the corporate safety world and I was going to jump into my own business, which I did not knowing anything about building a business and not knowing anything about, you know, where I really needed to operate as an entrepreneur and having very little money in the bank. But as it went, I went and learned along the way. But the key here is that it all starts with desire. Desire is the cause. You have to make a decision to go after what you want, what you want. Like, have you ever been in a job or in somebody's employ where, you just trying to be enthused, you're trying to make it work, but it just, ah, it's just not working for you. I remember that moment when I was at the Denver Business Journal, this was before Remax, and it was a great company, great people around me, you know, the job was a little, eh. And I remember one day I got in the elevator to hit the third floor button to go up there for work, and I could not raise my hand to hit the button. I couldn't even raise my hand to hit the button. So I sat there in the elevator and I thought, okay, clearly this is something you don't want, Diane. And I didn't even know what I wanted. All I knew was that I didn't want that. So I finally hit the button. I walked into my manager's office and I said, I need to quit and I have to quit today. I had no job opportunities out there. I had no resume put together. I had nothing, but I knew that it was something I couldn't do any longer. So understand that you can never build a desire for something that you don't want to do. You've got to have that desire of what you want to do. When you have that desire, that's what begins to propel the wheels forward to start making the prosperity happen in your world. So remember, too, at the same time, desire works both ways. So Andrew Carnegie said, any idea that's held in the mind that's either feared or revered will begin to clothe itself at once in the most convenient and appropriate form available. So any idea, feared or revered. So when you look at the world you want to have and you look at the business you want to have and you look at the bank account that you want to have, it's important to look at one thing first. What ideas have been clothing themselves in your world? I'm gonna say that again, this is an important one. What ideas have been clothing themselves in your world. 
This is what becomes auto-suggestion. Now, auto-suggestion is something that we're gonna be talking about throughout the whole months of this Armitage Millionaires Club because it is key, powerful force, a key, powerful force. Uh, Napoleon Hill wrote about it in Think and Grow Rich. Bob Proctor's talked about it. All kinds of people have talked about it because it is so very powerful. And to put it quickly and briefly, every idea that reaches your mind is a suggestion. Every idea. It may be your desire. It may be your idea. It may be someone else's desire. It may be somebody else's idea. But whatever the case, it starts up here in your conscious mind. All of these ideas, all of these thought forms are coming to your conscious mind. Now, your conscious mind is what chooses. It's what chooses your life. Your conscious mind makes the choice. This is the choice I'm making. This is how I'm choosing my life. It can accept an idea and it can reject an idea. It can accept your idea. It can reject your idea. It can accept someone else's idea. It can reject someone else's idea. See, the bottom line is you choose. 